scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And the Bible says the Lord spoke to the fish. Shalabakataya. The Lord spoke to the financial situation. The Lord spoke to your health condition. The Bible never said the Lord spoke to Jonah. God can speak to things, people, conditions. That's what makes him the Lord. The Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out upon dry ground. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. I may not have the power to speak to that situation by myself, but the Lord, the Lord sustains the power to speak to anything and they obey him. Are we together now? They said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Jonah was delivered. He saw the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Very mighty manifestation. Number four, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You find that in Daniel chapter 3. The Bible says Nebuchadnezzar built a 90 feet statue, pure gold, and he gave an injunction that at the sound of the instruments of music, everyone would bow to his image. And three Hebrew boys came up and said, Oh, king, we respect you. We are taught to honor, but as touching this matter, we will not be careful to speak. Our God will deliver us, they said, but that even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. The king said, All right, you made your choice. And they caused the furnace to be seven times hotter. Watch this now. I hope you know that was not a parable. It actually happened one day on earth. To the point that those who threw them were burned by the fire. As soon as they got in there, the king was amazed. He saw them moving without their hands and feet bound. And he said the appearance of the fourth was like the son of God. As a result, go to 28. Watch their deliverance now. The king made a very profound decree as a result of that. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. As a result, 29. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of these gentlemen shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Then he says, because there is no other that can deliver after this sort. 30. You would think the king would stop there. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. These four stories reveal very clearly that calamities and tragedies are real, but that the power of God to bring supernatural deliverance, restoration from negative situations, from tragedies and calamities is equally real. In fact, in greater dimensions. Let's define very quickly what a calamity is. I thought to just guide our understanding with this definition. I found a very interesting definition and I put a few together. I hope it helps. Write this down, please. A calamity is defined as a great misfortune. A great misfortune or disaster. A calamity is first and foremost defined as a great misfortune or disaster. Number two, 
it is defined as an event marked by great loss, distress, and suffering. An event marked by great loss, distress, and suffering. Let me repeat myself one more time. That a calamity is defined as a great misfortune or disaster. And then it is also an event, any event whatsoever, marked by great loss, great distress, and great sufferings. So any event that eventually leads to losses, loss of time, loss of things, loss of lives, loss of opportunity, loss of people, loss of destiny, qualifies to be called a tragedy, a calamity. Hallelujah. Now, the central point of my teaching tonight, and I believe this is where the Lord laid it very strongly upon my heart, I want to give you a rundown by the Spirit, which is really where the deliverance starts from tonight. Please lend me your attention. There are causes of calamities, losses, and tragedies. You need to know there are things men do in the spirit and even physically that can translate to a loss, a tragedy, and calamity. There are physical things that people do, but there are things people do in the spirit. Watch this, please. When Job's wife told him, curse God and die, what did she mean? How do you curse God and die? What do you say or what do you do? Because everything we know, men had said it and they did not die. So what, what, what formula can a man use to say something to God that leads to death immediately? Job knew how to do it. The wife knew how to do it. Curse God, he says, and die. How about King Herod? There were things that King Herod did and fell immediately and died. Worms came out of his body immediately. There were things that Ananias and Sapphira, are we Bible students? They did that made them to fall immediately. These things are captured in the Bible. I'm saying this because there are many people who have put together negative principles without knowing and they became victims. There are things that when you do in the spirit, there are things when you do upon the earth, it will translate to losses, calamities, and tragedies. Now, whether you know it or not, if I hold a gun, not knowing it is a gun, and point it at myself or someone, not knowing, let's assume it's a child, the gun will not refuse to shoot because it's a child holding it. Are we together? And that child may shoot that gun, become the first victim, and anybody else can die. The gun was designed to respond to whoever operates it, knowingly or unknowingly. The gun does not have the ability to distinguish ignorance, childishness, or adulthood. Whoever triggers it. Mm. And there are many people who have triggered spiritual laws. Listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. There are many families in their statements, while they were saying things, doing things, they were putting together a code in the spirit, giving the realm of the spirit an instruction. Bring loss to our family. Bring tragedy to our family. It is true. Hmm. Hallelujah. There are things men say to God. There are things men say to men. There are things men say to creation that must have an effect immediately. Creation will respond in a way that you may not know. Now, demon spirits know this. Occultists know this. When they want to destroy an individual, they don't come to his house to destroy him. They say things and program the spirit and send it to the man. Hallelujah. Yeah. Cause God and die. Not cause God and leave. Only God knows what someone has said that the realm of the spirit took as an instruction. All of a sudden your finances went down. You help demon spirits when they came, the job was already done. There was absolutely nothing to do. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, many of you will begin to shed tears because you say, so this is what I've been doing to myself, to my family. The realm of the spirit is alive and it has remained obedient from creation till today. Hallelujah. Hmm. 
the prophet speaks to the earth and says, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Do you know that what you call earthquake was a punishment for people who did not listen? And the ground opened. Is it not in your Bible? What did they tell the ground? That means the ground is a living thing. There is something you can tell it, it will open up. What did Moses tell the sea that make it, made it move obediently and became a wall? Science does not agree with that, but it happened. What did God tell the earth that the water from the earth became restless until it covered the earth? Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not understand the laws of the spirit, you will say things and do things and you will just think sometimes you are making costly statements whereas you are reprogramming things my assignment tonight is as a prophetic midwife because there are many of you the things that you have said the things you have programmed if help does not come for you you will keep receiving physical disasters and not know what it is there was a woman who laughed at a man who was praising God the Bible says God saw what she did she did not know that mocking a man praising God was activating barrenness in the spirit the Bible says she died barren he never cursed her she never cursed herself but something happened you can pick a computer and start hitting it typing all kinds of things and pressing it and in the midst of your confusion the computer is trying to make sense of the language it hopes you are speaking to it there are times you can press some things and then it starts continuing because as far as the computer is, com is, is, is concerned you gave it a command that it must obey Ah, when the Bible says order my steps you go and find out what that means in the name of Jesus Christ are you ready to learn there are causes when they saw a man listen the disciples who were mentored by Jesus himself they saw a man who was born blind watch what they asked Jesus they never said why is they said who sinned that this man was born blind was it him and if it's not him was it his father who taught them Jesus said neither that is not the only condition there are other conditions Did you ever read the scripture that says, say not before an angel I made a mistake? Because your assignment is to execute the speakings of the saints. Why do men, what causes tragedies, losses and calamities? Are you ready? I pray in the name of Jesus that God will open your eyes as I give you these keys. Number one, the first reason why calamities befall men, the first reason why tragedies come upon men is the absence or the lack of discernment. The absence or the lack of discernment. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, he says, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard watch this it says less at any time we let them sleep lack of discernment there are people today with all due respect if they had discernment they would not have jumped into certain vehicles if they had discernment they would have known that these people you see are arm robbers if they had discernment see the end time will demand that your sensitivity is acute and strong if you must survive today's days because satan can translate himself as an angel of light is someone learning lack of discernment isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 watch this it says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass, the master script, but Israel does not know, my people do not consider. Lack of discernment. There are many people today who have gotten in trouble because they lacked discernment. Oh, they could not discern that this is not just malaria, that in one week everybody began to be sick. That something this is not just malaria happening this is the devil trying to bring raise his ugly head 
and that it will take more than a medical attention. There are people who did not discern when the Spirit of God was telling them, start fasting. Give yourself to three days fast. And sometimes God will not tell you why. Yours is to obey. It's in the place of obedience that more revelation comes. Discernment. Discernment. Sometimes God can give you a job that may not make sense. But within that job is what connects you to the next level. The absence of discernment. One of the proof of a matured believer is that you have trained your faculty to be able to discern things. Discern things. Lack of discernment. The absence of discernment. Acts chapter 28 verse 27. Acts chapter 28. The Bible says, For the heart of these people is wax gross." and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them they are being converted and they are being healed depends on the ability to have their eyes opened and their ears open please lay your hands on your head and say in the name of jesus the grace for discernment i receive it right now discernment discerning opportunities discerning moments discerning evil when it is forming that i will not allow evil form before my eyes and then destroy me making me a victim of it in the name of Jesus Christ I obtain grace grace the ability to discern hallelujah hallelujah from scripture there are only two principal ways to build discernment number one the knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture and number two praying in the spirit these are the two principal ways that the saints build discernment you don't wish discernment number one the knowledge of the ways of god as revealed in scripture if you do not know how god works the devil will act in a way making you believe this is god until it destroys you the knowledge of the ways of god as revealed in scripture and then number two praying in the spirit Praying in the spirit helps the saints to build capacity to discern. Capacity to discern. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second cause of calamities, tragedies, and losses? Are you ready? Carelessness. As simple as this sounds, don't assume you think you know what I'm saying. Just pay attention. Carelessness. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. Carelessness. Carelessness. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Let's read together. Ready? One to read, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Hold on. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There are many, many believers who are careless with their lives careless with everything around their lives they take life they take god they take things for granted whatever would be would be careless with their prayer life careless with their word study life careless with their commitment in the house of god and they magically believe that tragedy will find its way of being exempted from their lives listen your possibilities in this kingdom happen to the degree to which you engage the forces of victory being at ease and allowing things to run themselves is like kicking a car and then just firing and allowing it to drive itself. You will most likely end in a ditch. I want to show you a scripture. I think I've shared that scripture here. But it's blessed my life. It became a warning. A warning to my life about the tragedy of carelessness. Are you ready? Judges chapter 11. Let's go to verse 30. Judges 11 30 3 0 Judges chapter 11 30 this is the story of a man called Jephthah Jephthah was a great man he was a warrior but he was one man who was careless and let's learn from the effect of his carelessness are you ready 
And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. Watch this. And said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands, reading to 35, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth from the door of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, it shall surely be the Lord, and I will offer it as a bond offering. Say carelessness. God did not ask him. God did not say, give me anything. By himself, he tied this chain around his destiny. Carelessness. So Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. 33. He smote them from all those regions, 20 cities, all to the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Now, when Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house, and behold, guess who was the first person who came to greet her father? His daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. This innocent girl came to celebrate her father from returning back as a warrior. But she did not know that the father had used his carelessness to program her death. Did she hurt him? No. Did she insult him? No. Was she a witch? No. An innocent, well-behaved girl who looked forward to the coming of her father. Perhaps she also prayed her own prayer. Lord, bring my daddy home safely. Not knowing that before daddy left, he used his mouth carelessly. How many parents have programmed evil over the destinies of their children? Just because you love your child does not mean your child will be free. Carelessness can make good people to behave like evil people. Watch this. She came to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her, he did not have a son or daughter. And Jephthah, 35. And it came to pass when he saw her. What happened? He rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Was it her fault? And thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I cannot go back. Hmm. Lord, if I arrive Koinonia safely, all my five houses I will give you. I will give you my firstborn, he must serve. I will give you my salary. I will even leave my job. And God says, I did not ask you. I am not an evil God. Carelessness has brought trouble on many people. There are people who vowed vows they had no business vowing. They made careless things because statements because of emotions and at the end of it they did not know that all of these things have conditions when you honor them and have conditions when you violate them hallelujah praise the name of the lord many people make all kinds of statements lord in the name of jesus if this one happens, if I don't give my car, kill me. Kill my generation. Kill the ones they give birth to. And they just believe they have just spoken to the realm of the spirit. It was carelessness that made those who wanted Herod to release Barabbas. You know what they said? They said, let his blood be on our heads and upon our children. You can curse yourself, but why bring your children as part of it? Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Many believers have put themselves in very troubling and disturbing circumstances today because of carelessness. They have made commitments that have brought financial losses. Out of emotions, they just got up and pledged on behalf of myself and my wife. And the wife is saying, we did not discuss this. I hereby bring five billion for the building of this building. They now give you a placard and snap it and put it on social media and keep texting you every day. We are waiting. Even one billion you've not given. And now your reputation is at stake. Can I tell you the truth? It is wise to not be hasty in speaking or doing. One of the proof that you are matured is to understand the gravity of what you are saying or doing. Everybody say carelessness. Yeah. Carelessness in driving. There are people who drive almost at 100 and whatever, provided the car is moving, they fire even if there is a traffic light in front of them. 
and then something happens when you have two mad men like that you will most likely have an accident are we together carelessness there are people who take things for granted they have a problem seen in the night and they want to drive from everywhere to everywhere you see before we begin to blame demons i told you demons are opportunists there are times that they don't even need to do anything the carelessness of the saints has already assisted in accomplishing whatever it is that the devil intended to do praise the name of the lord there are some of you because of carelessness with all due respect you see gatherings in the night and you say, I want to go and find out. You are not a police officer. You are not a law enforcement agent. It's none of your business. Your relatives are not there. Carelessness. And you get up and you do not know that these are people who are already plotting how to go and boggle a home. And just when you arrive there, the police arrive too. They pack all of you. May God deliver you from evil. Amen. Say amen. Amen. How about people who drive knowing that their tire pressure is bad? They will still drive. Their exhaust is dragging on the ground. They will still drive. Petrol or their gas is leaking from the car. They will still drive. And carry passengers. Have you seen those kinds of things? And some of you entered the car. The man made a vow and said, if you give me victory, the first thing that comes out of my house, only God knows how long he waited to have that one daughter. And this young lady comes out with timbrel dancing and saying, daddy, welcome. Do you know that he ended up sacrificing her? Now, will you call that man a murderer? Yes and no. Because no, being that he's a good man, but who killed her? There are many people who got into trouble willingly. They got up and got into trouble willingly. I'm saying this because there are many calamities in our lives that if only we had discernment and then obtain grace to be free from a life of carelessness, financial carelessness. There are people who are in debt today. They collected a car that they didn't have money to pay borrowed somebody's car and crashed it like the axe head remember all kinds of things carelessness living beyond their means getting into all kinds of trouble and today they are in a situation that has brought calamity and pain upon their lives ladies and gentlemen believers are taught by the spirit to become wise people and part of wisdom is to be able to live your life with discretion not to get up and get into trouble jesus was teaching us to pray and he said deliver us from evil that we ask him to deliver us from evil hallelujah number three why do people experience tragedies losses calamities ignorance ignorance Please don't assume you understand this. Ignorance. Ignorance of the laws of the spirit. Ignorance of the laws of destiny. Ignorance. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. People get into trouble because of ignorance. They say things. They do things. The Bible says also that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hasted with his feet sinneth. That a soul should be without knowledge, it is not good. And that he that hasted, you are in a hurry because of ignorance. You will sin against yourself. Please say ignorance. Many believers do not understand that there are laws. For instance, the law of honor. For instance, the law of diligence. These are laws. For instance, the law of seed time and harvest. Ignorance of these laws does not exempt you for the, from the consequences of not obeying them. The Bible says, he that considers the wind, is that in your Bible? He will not sow and as a result he will beg in harvest. Whether you are a sincere person or not, 
in our world today, if you did not farm or you did not prepare for the days where the rainy season is gone, you will beg. It's in the Bible. So being ignorant does not exempt you from the consequences of violating those laws. There are many laws that I've taught you here. The law of honor, the laws that control favor, the law of competence, all of these things, they are laws. And if you do not have an understanding of them, ladies and gentlemen, you will program calamity. For instance, a man, I hope you know that prayerlessness is officially authorizing evil to plague your life. Did you know that? That when a believer does not commit himself perpetually to pray, eventually you will put yourself in a position where you become a victim of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Prayerlessness. How about wordlessness? Not having access to the word of God. Ignorance. Believers must be dis delivered from the plague of ignorance. Many people will tell you they do not know. And they get into all kinds of trouble. Why are you like this? I do not know. You do not know that there are curses and yokes. You do not know that you came from a family where nobody has lived be before, you know, lived above 50 years. Just because you do not know does not stop the curses and the altars from working. It will take your ability, watch this, your ability to get out of ignorance into a point of knowledge and then obtain grace to engage that which establishes your liberty. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, we did not even know Christ went ahead to die for us. Imagine if everyone had to discover by himself and then personally ask for a savior. You see why it is called so great a salvation? Because we did not ask for it. I have watched and I tell you this with all due respect. I have watched people violate the laws of the spirit perpetually. I have watched people violate the laws of increase, the laws of greatness, the laws of advancement. I have watched people violate these laws perpetually, sometimes to their detriment. The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7. I have said, verse 6, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. If you do not know that what you are seeing is acid, consecrated acid, and you go and put your hands there thinking it is water or kerosene, will it pity you and say, okay, I, I, you are exempted? I'm acid. Next time, just be careful. As you put your hand there, sometimes you may not live to tell the story. Many people have gotten themselves through ignorance. They have ventured into things they did not understand. Some in ignorance, they just went to the village and got angry and entered a shrine. Removed everything there and said, we're tired of this nonsense. Bulldozer, come and bring this thing out. And while they were saying, they saw women crying and they did not know why. They were already crying. And the person said, God, let the spirits come to me. And then they left. And, and sometimes even believers who do not understand the dynamics of enforcing liberty, they just blindly went and said, don't worry, everything is done in Christ. And then they do, and nobody talks. You go back home, the first thing that disappears is your khaki, your wallet, everything disappears. And then you sleep, and then only part of you wakes up. At the end of it, and the person will be shouting, in Jesus' name, God, you cannot fail me. In Jesus' name, I trusted you, is ignorance. Hallelujah. Just because you are saying in Jesus' name, and you are calling the right Jesus, does not mean things will just happen. There are rules of engagement. Are you, are you listening now? This is very important. Ignorance. Even physically, there are those who did not choose their battles. They went to go and fight institutions that are bigger than them. They went to go and fight people. Listen to what I'm telling you. Across nations, there are nations that may be weak and just get up to go and fight people greater than them. 
the nation of Israel, every time they were going to fight a people bigger than them, they would consult with God. Three kings have come together against us. And sometimes Africa, with all due respect, sometimes we don't walk with wisdom, we just get up carelessly. There are individuals who just step in and say, in this office, I'm tired of this manager. I'm a child of God. I'm tired of oppression. And the man is quiet and watching you while you are done. And immediately he's done. He says, secretary, just give him the letter. Okay, we appreciate you. You can leave. He said, no, I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to complain. You can leave. And the person who is complaining like that, you would have calculated that what if I lose the job? While you were arguing and insulting the man who feeds you every day, you forgot you have five children and four relatives. Now they've driven you out. And in two days, your life has become miserable. Ignorance. Are we together? There are certain people you cannot cast out of your life. I've taught you this. They are not castable. You only pray for favor so you pass through their gates. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How do you cast Pharaoh because you want to come out of the prison? You will remain there because the Pharaoh is the leader over Egypt. If you want to come out of the prison, you don't pray that God will cast him. You pray that you will find favor with Pharaoh. Let him send for you to interpret his dream for God's sake so you can get out of that dungeon. Is someone learning? Careless. Ignorance. Let me give you number four. My God. This number four is going to be a very strong very strong one for someone misuse and abuse the fourth reason why calamities befall men this is an instruction that God gave me to teach this misuse and abuse misuse and abuse misuse and abuse it was Dr. Miles Monroe of late who said when the purpose of a thing is not known abuse the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use many people have abused opportunities they have abused doors relationships to their detriment today misuse and abuse please pay attention Many families today are suffering because of this abuse and misuse. It was true with the prodigal son. It was true with the sons of Eli. Remember the sons of Eli? Hophni and Phinehas. Abuse and misuse will always bring depletion. As I was meditating on this, it really dawned on me how true this thing is. Abuse and misuse. Do you know, I submit to you, there are many families today, with all due respect, who should never be begging for food to eat with the kind of people that God brought to their lives. But they abuse privileges. Are we together? Yeah. The manager gave you one of his car and said, be driving. Abuse, misuse. Gave you a house you did not pay for. Be staying there. Abuse and misuse. Gave you an opportunity. Gave you his ATM card and said, help yourself. You return back with a bill of over one million. Abuse and misuse. People go to the restaurant and they say, just eat anything. And they say, oh, this, this is my opportunity. Abuse and misuse. Please listen and learn. Many people today have abused opportunities. My uncle is saying, the moment you see that you are surrounded by great people but not affected by their greatness, there is abuse somewhere. There is misuse somewhere. Are we together now? Yeah. There are people who have abused relationships with men of God, abused relationships with their pastors, abused relationships with their leaders. Oh, it looks like my pastor likes me specially. He doesn't seem to rebuke me when I'm wrong. Abuse, misuse. Someone is sleeping or resting and you call him by 12 and 1 and say, please, can I have 30 minutes discussion with you? Because I donated 1 million to the church or 2 million to the church and you see, pastors, business people, there are those today who probably would never have gotten to certain offices but maybe by leverage and they got there 
And the next thing, they would just call the director of the company and say, you don't know me. I had when you were dictating your number to the other person. Wow, I'm amazed. You even picked my call, sir. You are a very great man. I've seen your face around the paper. And the man said, who is this? And cuts that call. And because of that, you and all who are connected to you suffer indefinitely. Abuse. Listen and learn, please. Many people have abused their relationships with God because God is merciful and compassionate. Many people have abused their relationships with men. Many people have abused the laws of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I've made it as a point of duty that anything God gives me that is valuable to my destiny. Number one, I will never become familiar with God, his presence, his people. Number two, I will make sure that anything that is an advantage in my life is worth my protecting. Did you hear what I said? Anything at all. If this phone is useful to me, then I must protect it. If this Bible is useful to me, I must protect it. If my spiritual life is useful to me, I must protect it. Abuse and misuse. So many people, sadly, including our loved ones, will tell you, you know, this guy on the TV, do you know that this was my friend? Do you know that we used to eat in the same plate? What changed and what happened? Abuse and misuse. Hallelujah. Abuse and misuse. Oh, remember we were classmates in primary school. I hear you're a director now. Ah, ah. Oh boy, let me give you five. The, the, the classmate then is not your mate now. You call it classmate. Are we together now? Very bad manners that you see people exhibit and they miss out on many things. They believe every president in every nation was their classmate and their friend. And because of that, they want to just bounce into maybe Asso Rock or anywhere. Unfortunately, yesterday is not today. You must learn to adjust yourself to the reality of the moment. Are we together now? Yes. Abuse and misuse. There are many people who have carried entitlement mentality and destroyed their lives, destroyed everything. God has granted me the honor and the privilege of access and relationship with some of our fathers and I vowed before the Lord that I will never abuse that privilege. Never. Never abuse that privilege. Can I tell you, every time you are around a great man, a great system, be careful because the tendency for abuse is closed. Have you seen people like that? Children abuse their relationships with their parents. This great man is my father. And when they get to points where they are teenagers and the rest, when he's giving warnings and talking to other people, they exempt themselves. After all, he's my father. It's the reason why the parents will leave an inheritance for the house helps, not the children. Every time I approach God, I don't approach God as a man of God. I don't approach God as Apostle Joshua Selman. No, I am still that boy that you have found. I have come with humility of heart. Correct me, build me. And God says, I've lifted you like this and you are still like this. Let's go to the next level. For someone, God is giving you a secret. Why many great people have left you. Why you are alone. You are not rising and they are not helping you rise. Abuse. You have abused privileges. Two businessmen will sit down and be discussing, for instance, transactions worth billions. And because you happen to be the caterer, you are listening to a discussion you have no business listening to. And in two days, you have called everybody. Wow! So this man has money like this. I have, there are things I know. And that abuse closes doors in the secret and in the open. Drivers have lost opportunity. All they have done was to drive great people for years with all due respect. And they never received anything because they feel I know this man. All his conversations, all his transactions... How about house helps and all of these people? I'm the person washing his clothes. I'm the person doing all of these things. I want you to kill the cancer of familiarity from your life. Please believe me. I know what I'm saying. The moment you become too familiar with people. Oh, Olu of Warrior and his wife. Let's, let's honor them. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together? The moment 
you put yourself in a position where you abuse and you misuse opportunities, that door closes forever. My question is, what door opened before that is now closed? I can tell you there was an abuse and there was a misuse. Hallelujah. The man promised you that you always pay your school fees. You just call or you send a text. Sir, it's time oh, send. You see that? What does he say? It's time. That's how you announce to someone who is doing what probably your loved ones could not do. How much is the school fees? 2.5 million. And you are telling him it's time. Oh. Something you may not be able to raise in one decade of your life. Every time God puts people around your life to show you unusual kindness, don't act as if it is something you would have been able to do. Are you learning now? God grants me grace I cannot give myself. I will roll on the ground and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I would not have done it by myself. Hallelujah. This man who has 20 cars, all that he gave me was one small golf to start moving around Abuja with. You mean this, this man, what is there? I've seen him buy things for strangers. And me, I'm his direct father's younger brothers, sisters. All, all that is stories. Nobody owes you anything, let me tell you. Get used to it immediately. No. Everything done is an act of kindness. And if you don't appreciate it, life, you will recycle your pain again and again. Hallelujah. With all due respect, and, and I say this with every sense of humility, they're, 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 I tell you sincerely, there are people whose calls and text messages I don't even respond to. I've never known them. I don't know them. Your first approach, you need me desperately and you need me at your terms. You are joking. I'm anointed and humble but not stupid. Humility is not stupidity. Are we together? No. Don't send me a text and say, meet me so so place or see me. Who do you think you are? What do you have? Politician? How many years? No, come on. Are we together? Don't do that. I'm teaching you many people are... It's not like God cannot bring you out of calamities. Most of us have not learned. We don't understand honor. We abuse and we misuse relationships to our detriment. We abuse and we misuse things. Someone gives you his car to travel with. You promise to return it after two days. And before you know it with that car, the first shock is that the car is all over social media. Come and see what God has done. And the owner of the car is saying, what in the world is happening here? The second shock is that you veer off and go somewhere else. The third shock is that you return the car. You don't even have the wisdom to fuel it, to say thank you or wash it. You return it with the mud from your village and pack it and drop the key. And then you are not even there to say thank you physically. I know this is hard, but just, I love you. Just listen to me. I'm teaching you how to come out of calamities. Hallelujah. Oh, do you know that I met, um, I met um, Daddy Gio? I'm telling you. I shook him. I even touched his shoulder. And then I met Bishop Wedeko. I, these guys are not, I, I, there's nothing special about them. Oh, can you imagine? And while you are saying that the realm of the spirit is hearing you, that means you have closed the door to that realm of greatness. They don't have to speak against you. I'm telling you, this is how it works. Every dimension of greatness in the kingdom has a grace that takes men there. And the moment you dishonor the men, you also dishonor the grace that lifts men there. Are we together? This ordinary pastor, what is there? I'm sure that this pastor is, wow, he's just, just lucky. And then you now say, Father, grant me grace. It will not happen. God is not a... Say, Father. Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. I obtain grace to not abuse and misuse opportunities. Amen. Hallelujah. For some, maybe you received an opportunity. Someone called you and said there is an offer for a job. Are you interested? 400,000, 500,000. Wow, that's a great testimony. Okay, apply very quickly. I'll wait in my office for you. And the person is watching a movie forever. Ah, I forgot, you know. And the person has been praying and fasting. God, give me a job. Here is someone trying to risk his or her reputation. And you do not mind. And he says, is it that nothing can be done? 
and by next week you go around saying all these people don't help church people don't help and they say but I waited for you let me teach you three ways to protect everything God gives you three ways are you learning number one pray one of the ways you keep anything God gives you is to pray for it opportunities if I don't pray for koinonia it is because I am not willing I'm not placing value on what God has given pray relationships pray resources pray people pray number two I taught you last week let me repeat gratitude you protect anything and you avoid abuse by learning gratitude Number three, become an active contributor to that overall process. Whether it is men, whether it's principles. Hallelujah. A great man gives you two million to go and start a business. Let me teach you what to do. Take 50,000 out of that two million and buy, even if it is um, a pack of wine, go back and tell the person, thank you. Are we together now? Yes. Go and say thank you. Say it again. Say it again. You will schedule seasons of grace beyond your imagination. I'm telling you this. There are things you may not ask for that the people will now say, what else can I do for you? Is someone learning? And then there are moments in your lives, let me teach you, for no reason, reach them and say thank you. Don't just say thank you at the point where kindness was shown for no reason. Wake up one morning, wake up one night. Senator, sir, I just want to say thank you. It's one year since I got this job and I know that it was by God, but it came through you. I want to say thank you for your thoughtfulness. The day you now hear that, God forbid, Senator's mother goes to be with the Lord. Make sure your text is also there to say thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I heard that this has happened, this has happened. I may not be in the position to comfort you, but just to let you know that we are, you are in our prayers. Will he reply? No. But did he see it? Yes. Is someone learning? Yeah. Abuse and misuse. God granted you grace. You did not pray for one month, yet doors kept opening because God forced somebody to lose sleep to keep interceding for you while you discover it. You abuse the opportunity. There are many people who don't pray. They say, ah, Koinonia is a powerful ministry. You don't worry. You've not gone to our prayer department, that's why. You've not seen apostle pray, that's why. And God says, there are things that only your understanding can bring you establishment of those victories, but abuse and misuse. I'm praying for somebody here. Whatever opportunity you have abused, whatever resources God gave you, men gave you. Some of you here, listen, before I even pray for you, this just came to my spirit. Please sit down before I pray for you. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people here. He once opened doors of financial resources. It was abuse. You were not yet established, yet a false life, trying to be a big man, a big woman. Hallelujah. And you plunge yourself. What God gave you was a seed. You didn't plant it. You ate your seed. In the kingdom, we don't eat seeds. When you eat seeds, you rob the ground of an opportunity to bring more. Hallelujah. Abuse. Maybe you are a man of God. One day God opened up doors for you. And you were in the midst of men of God where sincerely, based on your level of work, you should not be there. You abuse the opportunity. Everybody there was greater than you, both in the spirit and by the experience of ministry. But all you were concerned about was snapping with every father, not receiving the graces they carried. Oh, let them just know that I, I met Papa Adeboe. Let them just know that I snapped with Papa Kumui. And we use it to pride in ourselves. Can I tell you, every time God opens a door, don't use your hand to close it. There are some of you right now, after this service, you need to start building back certain bridges you have destroyed. Call that CEO woman. She may be temperous, but she has access to almost everybody within the economic space. Don't downplay that. It didn't come by luck. 
thank you for this thank you for that let me surprise you some of you need to call even your own parents and say thank you daddy I was born from a rich family I don't want to take it for granted I've seen my contemporaries suffer you may tell him but thank you for having the grace to even be able to do this there are many people who destroyed their lives before 11 before 12 now you have granted me grace to have a smooth path to my destiny as soon as i was born by two years old i was born again by four i was filled with the holy ghost you made me a church girl or a church boy and that's what has made me responsible i am 22 now and i'm about to buy my own house i want to say thank you don't abuse relationships one day take the time to send a text to any man of god who has changed your life don't keep receiving alone thank you I'm not saying this so you do anything for me or no what I'm teaching you as a principle thank you sir for teaching the word thank you for doing all of that yeah are you learning abuse and misuse and more importantly some of you after this service you need to go and kneel before God and say who but you is able to lift me I never imagined I'll be able to survive 2023 because I came into this year without a job I still do not have a job but look what your mercy has done in my life the same trouble that plagued all of us I came out but my friends died thank you and God says in the midst of this world of ingratitude you can do this to me let's go to the next level God, I've been talking to you about this issue of marriage. Is it that I'm not beautiful? How did you create me? And God says you will remain there in that kind of, with that kind of attitude. Thank you that I'm alive and sound and not in a rehab. The person in a rehab is not thinking marriage. The person in a rehab is thinking survival. How about some cancer patient with stage 4 cancer and they are still saying thank you Jesus. Can I tell you, we live in a world where always prides in seeing the things God has not done. And you forget to see the things that he has done. Is someone learning tonight? This, I'm emphasizing this because it's one of the greatest reasons. Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, they had an opportunity and joined the immunity of priesthood to take some of the portions without looking at it whatever they brought out was their blessing and this boy started checking to select carefully and god was watching you see let me tell you something the consequences of abuse does not show immediately but i assure you for as long as god lives one day it will catch up with you hallelujah i will not forget lord your benefits I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your faithfulness. How can I forget, Lord, your benefits? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your benefits. This is what I tell him. Oh, when I'm with him, I get down my knees and I say, my Lord and my maker, look at what you have done. May I never get to any place. I'm telling him now where I forget you. Can any man lift you when God has not lifted you? Can any door open for you when God has not authorized it? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. Let me not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your benefits. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The question the Lord is asking you today is who has the power to help you and has refused to help you because of abuse and misuse? Have you abused opportunities? 
Have you abused relationships? Have you abused doors? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Number five. Mm. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. Remain my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. Try this, ladies and gentlemen. Use even if it's a few hours sometime this week and don't ask for anything. Just roll before the Lord. Find a way. Mention things. Mention people. Mention doors. Mention opportunities. You do this as an experiment and watch what happens to you. Forget about what you think he has not done, what men has, have not done, what is not yet there. Thank him for what has happened. Lord, I thank you for life. I recovered from this infirmity. You took away shame. Quarter to shame. My family would have been left as an object of shame and mockery. And look how you came in gallantly. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Are you ready for number five? The fifth reason why people experience calamities, tragedies, and losses is as a result of demonic and satanic attacks. Demonic and satanic attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is not a friend. He will kill everything he can kill. Destroy everything he can destroy. I assure you on that. Satan is ever determined to destroy every family, destroy Koinonia, Joshua Selman, your family, provided you are on earth, more so that you name the name of Christ. You have drawn a line that it takes understanding and engaging the forces of victory to overcome. John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal look at this and to kill and to destroy this is satan's assignment when it comes to your life he will steal he will kill and he will destroy the same way God schedules men to give you opportunities. Satan is a robber. Ladies and gentlemen, let me list for you a few things that he steals. He steals years. He steals destinies. He steals relationships. He steals resources. He steals your convictions. He steals your discernment. Like I taught you two weeks ago, he steals your ability to see. There are thieves that when they come to your house, is your money, direct money. They don't have the time to carry rice, to carry beans, to carry yam. That's not part of what they are looking for. They need something they can take immediately, not Satan. When Satan steps into a life, he does not even spare anything. Your joy he will take. Your peace he will take. Your relationships he will take. Hallelujah. How do you know Satan has visited a man? Please listen to me. Because there will always be perpetual depletion decline pain losses tragedies satan for you let satan come into a home and you will see the best of couples loving jesus and loving themselves for a silly sometimes insignificant reason satan the programmer for you he will program tragedy and pain you can see his signature 
every time he steps into a life you will see a beautiful destiny a young gentleman a young lady serving the lord with all their hearts and loving jesus and let satan be allowed to strike and you see everything will go down he will replace beauty with ashes joy with mourning everything goes down have you seen people with all due respect that you knew years maybe years ago and now you maybe you stumble across them and sometimes you have to hold yourself because of the shock you almost want to say what happened how come you depleted like this looking as if you were left for dead where is the job it's gone that opportunity is gone where are your relatives all gone where is your joy is gone are you still a child of god I'm, I'm not sure what has happened to you now i'm depressed who caused it my uncle wrong answer satan satan for you he will come in and destroy people destroy whatever you see a man of god who was vibrant on fire loving jesus commanding signs and wonders and with all due respect years later no vibrancy no fire is all gone where is your influence? He stole it. Your reputation? He stole it. Your integrity is gone. The name God gave you is gone. Listen, if you let Satan, he would destroy you. My assignment tonight is not just to announce this. There are some prayers who are going to pray in this place that everything Satan has stolen in the name that is above all names, I'm praying for you, it must be restored this night. Not next week, it must be restored this night. There are people, some of them listening to me now, once upon a time, you could build a house for people without thinking twice. Today, you can plead for 20,000 Naira. Your brain did not disappear. Satan visited you. Hallelujah. Once great, once blessed, once anointed, once upon a time, with all due respect, around the world, there are many vibrant people who used to serve the Lord with energy. If you hear that they are coming to town, or you hear that they are coming to a nation, I mean, you just have to pray that you are even able to reach there. But today they call on a nation and nobody answers. Can I tell you, the worst thing that can happen to a man is to once be in a position where God places you. And then in your lifetime, and also in the presence of those you raised, you go down. I forbid it over your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of your parents, some of our parents, in their lifetime, they were blessed they loved Jesus. They had influence. Some of you saw people line up in your houses just to see your parents. But in old age, they are alone. Everybody, you had to change your surname because if you still use that name, it may program failure for you. Come on now. Satan for you. Mm. You have known the works of God. I think I was teaching for who now? I think it was, it was Bishop Adejimo. And I shared something in that meeting I still remember. There are things when you see, you know it's a man that has done it. There are things when you see, you know it is God that has done it. But there are things when you see, you know that this is Satan. Hallelujah. A man comes to meet you and say, young lady, I like you, you're a nice lady. Let me go and see your parents. And then Satan intercepts. And all of a sudden, doesn't pick the call again, doesn't do anything again. What happened? I had a dream and I saw that you were a witch. Come on now, Satan for you. I'm, I'm saying this because I'm going to pray for someone. Anything that has taken away your glory, any demonic thing that is bringing you to a point of shame, I call upon my God who is also your God. He must give way, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hallelujah. Please sit down. With all due respect, there are people today perhaps they would have been appointed in certain great positions around the world. But just before the appointments get there, there were some Ahitophels who reached before them and said, do you know what? Don't lift this woman. Don't lift this man. And they have remained so. 
I made up my mind that that story once great will never be used in my life. No, that story once anointed, once impactful. But to, to keep that testimony, it takes more than a heart of integrity. You must know what to do with Satan. Hallelujah. You must know what to do with Satan. I once prayed for a lady true story. This lady met me and she said, Apostle, you must pray for me. I think I'm possessed. I said, how do you just come and say you are possessed? She said, I don't understand. Everybody keeps having dreams that I'm either pursuing them or killing them. It's my face they keep seeing. More than, according to her, over 10 people in the church. And then, of course, they will share with the church leaders. And everybody just told them, avoid this lady. And some already had called her a witch. A faithful worker in the church. And she noticed that her leaders, true story, the leaders who avoid her, everybody who avoid her because they go to bed and they see her face. I can tell you that is a satanic manipulation because her destiny is around that vicinity. And Satan may know that in her rising, maybe the rising of her family members, Satan is very calculative. He makes sure that what he attacks must create a ripple effect. Who can I touch in this family? that will affect the 20 other people. Oh, you are the one. Then he comes. Do you know why you lost the job? It's not just an issue of incompetence. You better open your eyes and see that this was an attack. Because in your getting that job is the health, the nourishment, and the stability of every other person in your family. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. A dear woman one time reached me and she said she gave birth to according to her now and I'm saying it because she had shared the testimony herself she gave birth to a normal son very fine very normal son and then I think about the age of three or four he began to exhibit hyperactive you know he started behaving you know this and that and they went to the hospital only to say that the boy was autistic and she said I never gave birth to an autistic child this child was normal this child was this and that and they gave some drugs and she just felt that's all right you see carelessness again that was a time to attack this thing with energy no let him just grow a while and they found out that the thing was getting he was becoming violent and i said madam you are not just a mother you are not just a wife you are a priest if you ignore that duty it is not only this child everything satan does is not the only thing he wants to do it's just the first thing he's doing did you hear what I said? Every attack Satan launches on your life is only part one. I assure you there is part two, three, four, and part infinity coming to the degree to which you allow him. But as for me, from onset, Shabakatapa, I don't have the time to waste. Immediately, not Koinonia, not Joshua Selman, the blood is upon this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Is someone learning now this is where the place of spiritual intelligence comes learn to discern where, when Satan is around the vicinity negative things start happening someone who used to love you now hates you for no reason don't sit down saying my boss I'm finding flimsy excuses he is not my tribe that's why they will soon drive you out of that place Go and shut the door and say, I know. I know that when you grant favor, oh God, you grant favor completely in the name of Jesus. The spirit around my place of work that is making them antagonize me. I call the name of the God of Jeshurun and I curse you over this office. Hallelujah. There are preachers with all due respect that begin to see the movement of Satan around their ministries. Stories are flying around, things are happening around, people are becoming rebellious, antagonistic. It is not a leadership problem alone, it is a spiritual problem. It means that Satan has discerned the impact of that organization, that ministry, and he's coming to scatter everything. Your assignment is to learn to hold on to the four horns of the altar and pray. In one week, you spent over one million treating mysterious sicknesses. Your husband became sick just when you were trying to help him. The children became sick. Then you hit your car somewhere and then the generator stops spoiling and then everything is happening and you find out you are getting angry without cause. You can't pray. You can't fast. It's an attack. It's not psychology. It's an attack. 
a once brilliant child now that you started paying school fees of say 1.5 million per term because of your passion to invest someone who used to be the brightest in the class now does not know he's about maybe the second to the last and you keep quiet and he keeps going down one time the school calls you and say we're sorry we may have to relieve you, your child it is not your child's being dull it is called the waster there is something called the waster in scripture is someone learning the waster demonic attacks are real I assure you by God demonic attacks are real Satan attacks men he attacks ministries I told you that there are demons allocated over territories there are spirits allocated over you know generally believers to stop the purposes of God but there are spirits that are allocated they follow mantles they follow offices not men whoever holds that office and holds that mantle will have to contend with that spirit there are spirits that follow ministries not men so there is a widespread manifestation of certain disasters how will you like to be part of a ministry that you hear that in one month 25 people just died mysteriously it will now make sense to say that could it be that something is happening and in, in, in peace you will leave that is Satan for you. I'm saying it again. In the name of Jesus, every attack. Because some of you, you came to church tonight. You are in the middle of an inexplainable battle. Rising from left and center. What is happening in my life? God, give me an explanation. And I'm telling you that for many of you, it is just an assault, an attack from Satan. Now listen. One one of the signature proof that satan has visited you is your health listen listen this health you see i know that there are many doctors here and with all due respect i honor and i respect you we're having a training already for our medical practitioners but can i tell you with all humility i've been in this business of ministry and the spirit life for a while i know what satan does it is impossible for Satan to attack you and leave your health. It's a lie. How do you know? Mysterious manifestations. They first start small. He tests your capacity in the spirit and then you keep quiet. It's just continuous headache that comes every month. It's just, it's just some demonic thing. Um, help them, please. I, I know that this thing, I'm just feeling serious pain. I went to the hospital and they said it's nothing. Um, it's, just a, it's just a mild bleeding situation. It, the, the doctor said he does not understand, but he's still there. I just know that every time I lie down, I see myself in a coffin somewhere and I wake up tired. My friend, get up from the strength of spiritual intelligence and begin to deal with that issue. Otherwise, you would destroy your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Know when it is just a medical situation and when spirits have participated with you. There are certain tiredness that is not because of the work you are doing. It's an attack from hell. Hallelujah. Heart pain, headache. And they tell you they found a tumor at the back of your head. How did it get there? We don't know what is going to happen now you need 10 million 15 million and you've saved just when you save to finally build a house i tell you it's an attack don't smile and say it's all right it's just part of these things hallelujah it's good to eat well walk with what the doctors say i eat well i make sure i eat healthy don't be careless but in addition to it, please come to terms with the fact that we live in a real world. And don't let Satan lie to you taking advantage of age. You are not the first person to be old. Refuse that thing that the older you are getting, the more you should deteriorate. I don't know about you, but I choose to reject it. No, as my days are, so shall my strength be. This is what my Bible teaches me. If you don't believe this, you will get into trouble. One day you will wake up, a young man, 30, 40 years, you stand up as if you are 80 years. Reject that spirit. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. 
incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.